ไมเกไมุนาไมเยโอนามิอาอุนานุเอวโอนามิเลเอวโอนามิเยIn Wai Nai, a lot of families are on like you know welfare, food stamps, and there's limited amount of fresh food that they can buy. Because of that, the diet of our people tends to be like high in sodium, fast food. We have all these problems, these health issues, such as like high diabetes rates and you know high blood pressure and all that stuff. Some of our students, if you t was to ask them, like who in their family has diabetes or high cholesterol. Probably almost everyone has it. It can pass down through generations just because we've been so disconnected from our food system. Here at Mott Organic Farms, we're a nonprofit social enterprise, and our mission is to grow fresh organic veggies and to grow young leaders for our community. Yeah. When I first got here 12 years ago, I was just an intern, a part of the youth leadership training program. One of my teachers was saying, "Oh, there's this internship program in Y and I. They pay for college." And you get a stipend. I was like, oh man, this is a really good opportunity. Like I can go to college, no debt, and get paid while doing that. Currently, we're producing around one to two tons of food a week. When I first joined Mao, I saw people never even heard of a lot of the vegetables we have here, um, never eaten a lot of vegetables. That kind of changed as we cooked for them. There's a big shift from eating a lot of processed foods or a lot of fast foods to eating a more balanced and more vegetable diet. We've known for a long time that interns' health improves over the course of their experience at Mount Organic Farms. In 2017, we decided to interrogate that understanding more fully. So the Maui Ola study we've undertaken in partnership with the University of Hawaii. What this study has revealed to us and affirmed to us is that as an intern is on the farm, they increase their consumption of leafy green vegetables, which in turn changes the composition of their gut microbiome, which in turn decreases their lifetime chance of contracting type 2 diabetes. And it wasn't a reduction in BMI or body mass index. It wasn't about taking things away. It was actually about adding fruits and vegetables at the most fundamental level the Maliola study has been super special for us because it just shows that there is a way to prevent these illnesses in our families. After every harvest, is, if there's extra vegetables, we're always pushing our students to take stuff home and to share it when everyone should have access to fresh food. I've always believed that the land is a reflection of our people and the people is a reflection of the land. To me, that's aloha aina, yeah, and malama aina. You take care of the land, the land take care of you. When the land is healthier, we become healthier. When we become healthier and smarter, the land becomes more abundant. In the early 1980s, they were going to build the resort community and golf course in this valley and the next valley over. Hawaiians and kupuna in our community led an effort to save this space. Our founders recognized that we needed Waipa to continue to practice and perpetuate our culture and have access to our resources in this community. As a living learning center and a 1,600-acre ahupua'a, one of the big activities that we do here at Waipa since the late 1980s is Poi Day. The goal through Poi Day is to keep Poi available and affordable. The founders of this place saw that back in the 80s, Poi was getting to be too expensive for Hawaiian families and kupuna to be able to buy and consume as the cultural staple food that it is. And so, being situated here in Hanalei, we know who the kala farmers are. We have land we can farm ourselves. Why not work to right that food injustice by growing and buying kalo and making our own poi? And so they started gathering to make poi every Thursday, bringing heiki, friends, family, 
And we continue that, and we have this core of volunteers that comes every Thursday for the future of our culture and the future um, of our people. It's so important for us to be, continue to eat poi and teach our kids to eat poi. We distribute it uh, at cost for what it costs us to buy the kalo. In that way, we know that we can keep poi on the table, that kupuna can have it because it's their medicine. They can have access to those live probiotics and they can also feed it to their keiki so the keiki get the ono for it. If they don't have the incentive to want to eat the poi, then they're not going to probably go out and grow the kalo and mill the kalo and come here and clean it and cook it because it's a very long uh, process to be able to have poi. But we know that in order to keep our culture going and to perpetuate that, we need to be willing to do the work. Poi Day for us is extremely important for our community, not only to keep poi on the tables of our families and to support our local taro farmers, but it's also a place where people come together. It's our kupuna social hour. It's our community's way to socially stay together. In April 2018, the community around Waipa, Kauai's North Shore community, was hit by an epic flood event. It devastated a lot of the infrastructure in our communities. We sent a lot of poi and lots of fresh local produce out to the communities that were unable to access stores. It taught us that it's extremely valuable to have local food producers in your communities to help provide healthy food to people in the event that they get cut off. Because the road was closed, we had to shut down our farmer's market. We started putting the produce that we harvest from our gardens in a self-serve fridge here at White Paw. So it became easier for people to come in and stop in and get their produce here. And so now we actually see a lot more people come in and out of this space now that maybe didn't before. It was not just uh, gratifying for us because it gets our produce out to the local community, but surprisingly enough, we actually make more money off the fridge than selling our produce at farmer's market. We're in a really exciting time right now because there's such a movement around farm to table, community supported agriculture, small scale farming, local food is much more accessible. Food is empowerment. When you can literally eat the fruits of your labor, it does so much for the human spirit. And if we all can return to some kind of practice of being with Aina and we can malama Aina. The Aina will malama us back. Farm to School has huge opportunity to support children in getting healthy, and on the other hand, it's gonna be supporting farmers. It is the largest potential market and buyer of fresh local produce in this state. We have this opportunity to bring more fresh fruits and vegetables into the schools to create more opportunities for small farms to supply the school and to really transform our state's food economy. My husband Dash and I, we founded Hip Agriculture back in 2011. We chose this path to become farmers when I became pregnant with our first child. So we've been able to raise our children on the farm, feeding them really fresh food. When we got the word that Kohala schools were gonna be the first pilot for farm to school in the state, we were so thrilled. We jumped at the opportunity to become a supplier to the Kohala cafeteria. Farm to School is taking out the big distributors and inserting our local farmers. Instead of taking frozen foods and microwaving them, we're taking fresh foods and cooking them from scratch. Garden to Cafeteria takes Farm to School one step further. Food that the students are growing is harvested by them and delivered by the students to the cafeteria. It also presents an opportunity for the students to take home fresh produce that they helped grow. It'll help create a demand for more local produce. It's also the whole, all of the educational programs we do to reconnect youth to the land, to farms, to where their food comes from. 
After the pilot of Kohala Complex, the state decided that they want to expand farm to school to all 256 schools across the state, which is almost 200,000 meals a day. This is a huge opportunity to revitalize agriculture statewide because we've never had such a large market. If they just serve banana smoothies one extra day a week, that's thousands of pounds of bananas that Hawaii farmers can grow for local youth. Gardens are the best places for young people to learn. The hands-on, experiential, tactile learning where they're smelling, they're tasting, and they're part of cooking it and preparing it, that's the way we're gonna get children to eat healthier new foods. We're building a pilot and a model for what farm to school looks like. That's our role, is really committed to making and helping the DOE and the Kohala cafeteria work out the kinks so that we can say what works and doesn't work. Hawaii has the potential to be the example for the world of what it means to live sustainably and feed our people well. We are working on building the farmers that are gonna be needed to grow the food for our communities. On Oahu, about 30% of what we throw away is food. Yet we have no municipal composting facilities. And this is a problem because our main way of dealing with our trash is by burning it in a facility called H-Power. And while this produces a little bit of energy, it's producing a lot of carbon from all of that food waste, which contributes to climate change. We're also losing all of those nutrients that could be incorporated back into the soil. So when I learned about what the Changing Tides Foundation was doing on the North Shore, I was stoked because this is a community-driven solution to a giant global problem of food waste. Last year, attending the Center for Food Safety's Regenerating Paradise film series, I saw how much of a, an impact we can have with the simple act of putting food where it should go, you know, treating it as a tool rather than trash. It inspired us to start the community compost movement. We've developed a pickup service for residents who don't want to or don't have the time to compost in their own homes. When you subscribe to our pickup service, we bring a bucket and bokashi to your house. And every time you add food scraps, you sprinkle a little bit of bokashi. Bokashi, it's magic. It's this effective microorganism powder that takes away the smell. It starts to ferment the food and break it down much faster and it makes it easy. Every Wednesday morning, we come to your house and we give you a new bucket and we take your bucket full of food scraps to the farm to be turned into soil. Once you reach a certain weight of food scraps that you give to us, you get some soil back. So we're actually taking those food scraps that you know come from the people in the community, using it to create soil, and then giving them back that soil. It was a really easy decision to become a subscriber and supporter of the community compost movement. I felt like it was a much simpler and more efficient solution for us to just give straight to our friends and get in return soil that I was able to actually plant pineapples with the other morning. Given households this five gallon bucket with a screw top lid, they can take their dinner, put their food waste in there, and it's not waste anymore. That bucket comes directly to the farm, and we compost that, and then within four to six weeks, it turns into soil. Before we plant anything, we put compost down, and then that turns into food that the community comes to buy through the CSA programs. This is a global movement. There are municipalities and other locations in the United States and globally who treat food scraps as, as a tool and as a way to regenerate our soils. The community compost movement is a key piece for creating a zero waste future for Hawaii. By dealing with our food waste in a healthy and generative way, we're reinforcing local ag and we're decreasing our carbon footprint. This one small example of how we can deal with our residential food waste can cascade into the business sector. Think about our visitor industry and the hotels and the restaurants that are generating all of this food waste. And here we have an example of something positive we can do with it. Getting involved in something is life-changing. And now we're at a place that we're able to connect with community members, create an economic cycle, 
create good agriculture, partnerships. It's, it's so much more fulfilling than what I had originally thought. And you just gotta start somewhere. Get out there and get involved.